doing any one particular process because we don't feel like one particular process meets every situation's needs. But there is a general flow towards conflict resolution that I find I do generally follow. And that is when setting those agreements so that I know what my job is as a facilitator. I don't think I can easily mediate a conflict if I don't know what people need in order to feel safe in a space. The second is somehow addressing what people think has happened and how people are feeling about that. The reason is that if there's 10 people involved in a mediation process, there is more than likely 10 different understandings of what happened. And often everyone thinks there is one understanding of what happened, and it is their understanding. <laughs> and just hearing the other nine understandings of what happened helps to illuminate those language gaps and miscommunication, helps to dissolve the lack of communication, and dismantle a lot of people's feistiness, frustrations, and anger. So by allowing people to share their understandings of what has happened, I'm already moving us towards resolution. The second piece of how that has made people feel and how people are currently feeling builds empathy. It helps people step out of their space of I'm afraid or I am angry and into a space of, oh, I didn't know it hurt your feelings. I'm not ready to say I'm sorry, but I now know that you think that I hurt your feelings. Cool. So it builds understanding and it builds empathy. Um, well, we're going to go into this in more depth over there. But. And then the third general step is identifying what people's needs and wants are. I don't assume that people can identify what a need is versus what a want is, especially when they're in a very highly emotional state. So I don't say only needs or only wants, because that's a good way to just throw a wrench that doesn't need to be there in the middle of the mission. Instead, I just say, what do you need or want? But that can help us identify goals, clear steps forward, easily uh, accomplished things, and broader, bigger things that might be organizational. Like someone's needs coming out of a mediation I did recently was, I don't want this to ever happen in our organization again. Because we have no policies around sexual harassment, I need us to develop policies around sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. um, and then that group did that, and now they have them. So that was easy in some ways for them to identify that need and then for the organization to take it on. Um, it was work for them, but they did it. And they're like, oh, right, OK, cool. And now all the women in that space feel more comfortable. And in dealing with the sexual harassment, they developed a protocol and a process for, for how they will deal with it in the future. So then their policy writing was just writing what they had done. Yeah. That's an example. Another one was, I need to know what he's thinking, what he was thinking. What were you thinking? And then in the same resolution process, you're like, I can tell you what I was thinking. Boom, done, need met really fast and she was like, wow, I wish I had known that three months ago. So, and then lastly, what are you going to do about it? Which is not what do I want anyone else to do about it. The other people doing things about it is more in the needs and wants section. Um, but what I'm going to do about it is getting to um, empowering everyone involved. Again, not necessarily on a 50, 50 year quarter, 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 quarter level, but it can it powers everyone. So even in a situation where one person felt like they had lost agency, by them identifying what they're going to do about it, which was them identifying what they would do differently in the future if confronted with similar harassment, they said that they felt more empowered and stronger just by being able to identify that. So that's why I always encourage that, even when there's a um, person causing harm and a person harmed, even in a situation like that. So, <laughs> um, so <coughs> when I write up agendas, I don't write up a one, two, three, four. Um, I 
don't know why, but a meandering path somehow calms people down. I don't, I really don't know why, but I've, I've just found that if I draw a map, everyone's calmer. And when, if I put it in a linear order, they're not as calm. So that's what I do. Um, like I said, I almost always request that the group provide food and water minimally, depending on the severity of the situation and neutral space. Um, and caffeine, depending on the players involved. So I'd like to welcome everyone and get them settled, make sure they have snacks, be sure they have drinks before we start anything else. Because immediately they, I know that they can self-regulate their bodily needs better. Great. That's also when I say that like I'm here because I've got your back. I've usually already talked to every person involved unless it's like a 30 person thing. If it's 10 people or less, I will have already talked to them about what they think success looks like um, and anything they think I need to know before I'm going into the situation. That's when we do, after that is when we do the intention setting where they go silently. They haven't yet talked to each other silently. Again, this is different. It's an art, not a science, and it depends on the severity of the conflict. Um, and then we do then we do check-ins, how are you doing, before we even get into it, because everyone's like, I'm nervous, I'm afraid, or they're feeling nervous and afraid, but they're not ready to say it, that's okay. Um, and we do the community agreement, so I have my job description. And then we do some, some questions I use to get at number two. I, I often don't use what's happening, because what that question elicits is 30-minute narratives of everything that has happened. And then that one person sent that email, and then I forwarded it to you, and then you responded, and I sat with it last night thinking, I don't know, I mean, it's just that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> what do you perceive the conflict to be? That gets it shorter and answers that get more to this map. And it also doesn't set people up to get into a fight about what happened. It also doesn't set people up to get into a fight about what happened. Um, also, how have you been affected or how do you feel? So the model could be different. When it's really tense, I'll say, you just talk to me. Don't talk to anyone else in the room. Don't worry about them. We're just going to have a conversation and their job is to listen. Because um, some, I've found that sometimes people aren't ready to talk to each other, and it can make it harder for them. If they are ready to talk to each other, they can talk to each other. I think you and I are not getting along because of blank. <coughs> That's the art part. Um, I always bring them to feelings. So how that make you feel? How are you doing? Are you upset still? Help to bring out feelings. And if you live in the Bay Area, <laughs> you'll get a lot of, I feel like you just don't understand me and don't listen. And, and that's actually what's happening, what you, what you perceive the conflict to be. And then I'll be like, oh, so you feel misunderstood? Oh, you feel ignored. Oh, you feel not listened to. So I'll reflect back to them, not what the other person is doing, but what they're feeling. <coughs> Notice that's not the case out here as much. <laughs> so people will say, I feel ignored more often here. Or in the South, or in the Midwest, or, you know, we have. Not the Bay Area. Well, I, I mean, I love the Bay Area, but that's like my my gripe about doing conflict resolution in the Bay Area. And this is, right. and this, and this is just part don't name of it. cultural differences. <laughs> I, that isn't a joke. It, the United States is really large, and different regions have developed different ways of communicating. And that is real. But the reason for me reflecting is, Lydia hearing me say, I feel like you're just ignoring me, is not going to help her build empathy. And the goal of that question is to build empathy and understanding. So in order for her to build empathy and understanding, she needs to know I feel ignored and misunderstood, not that she's doing something. Does 
that clear? mm-hmm that's why i reflect back.